Like, I've risked my own life protecting other people. Sometimes for good pay, sometimes for shitty pay, you know, but I've been a bouncer for a long time and I've done it in many countries and my reputation and everywhere I bounce speak for itself, guys. I always help people. I always help people. I'll tell you guys a story. In Acapulco, when I was bouncing in Alebrije, I was head of security of Alebrije, but either way, I was also teaching. So I was teaching a private lesson, middle of the day, 3 p.m. I'm teaching a private lesson and um, with the owner outside the, outside the gym. The gym is upstairs here and here's the main street. And we're outside on, uh, on like, uh, in front of the gym. On the outside of the gym, outside, we're training outside. We're doing pad, we're doing Dutch kickboxing stuff. And then we're almost done with our training. We're taking a break when all of a sudden, dude, and I, I seen it halfway, I didn't see the whole full thing, but I saw the motorcycle. I seen a motorcycle that rolled up and I heard it too because it was loud. And it rolled up next to a Volkswagen, a red Volkswagen bug. This was right next to Sunboards in Oceanica 2000 in Acapulco, like right in that stoplight. So this motorcycle rolls up next to this Volkswagen with two dudes. Two dudes in the, in the Volkswagen, red Volkswagen bug, old school one, and two dudes on the motorcycle. The dude in the back of the motorcycle got off and unloaded a revolver on these two dudes. Pom, 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 you know? And then, like, I seen the car moving, but I wasn't able to see him actually shoot. But I heard the shot, so I ducked. And then I looked up, and then I seen the motorcycle take off, and I seen that the car was shot to shit. So everybody was scared, of course. Everybody ran away. Everybody that was in the street. It was in the middle of the afternoon, like, like I said, like three. And then people from the gym came out to look. And I was the only one, guys. I was dressed in my white taekwondo pants, white shirt, fanny pack. I had everything in my fanny pack except the gun. So I had uh, pepper spray, two pairs of handcuffs, uh, retractable baton, a bunch of knives, a bunch of things in there, but just no, no handgun at that moment. Uh, I went down there and then I saw that the guy on the passenger side was dead. Like he had his brains coming out the side of his head. He was just dead. And then I noticed the car door opened the guy that was driving opened his door and he fell. So I go around the side to give him, to help him. And then I see that he was shot in the neck somewhere here. So with blood coming out. So I had him, I grabbed his hand, I told him to put pressure there. He's looking right at me, this guy. They were obviously drug dealers, so were the guys that shot him. And uh, I could tell also because there was little packages of money all over the car. Like they had a bag of money, the money was all over the car. But it wasn't like big bills, it was like a lot of small Mexican bills, like 20s and 50s. I don't even think there was any packages of hundreds. It was all really, really small bills, but a lot of thick packages. So it wasn't all that much money, but it's like small scale traffickers. Um, so, and the guy is big, he's like fat. He's like over hundred kilos and not that tall. So he's big, he's a big boy. And I'm, I, I, he's laying there next to the door. I'm in front of the car and I'm telling him to put pressure here. Then I see he's also shot here and he's also shot in the leg. So he's shot uh, in the neck, side and leg. So this side of the neck actually, sorry, not the left side, but because he's turned facing my way, I see it on this side, okay? So his right side, but facing me, it's his right side, which is my left side, he got shot from this side. So it's here, here, and here. And I call the ambulance, the ambulance, luckily the ambulance is just down the street from there. There's an there's there's ambulance, like two blocks from there, right? And then as you may know or not know, in Mexico, a lot of times when these things happen, there's cops around. So when I walk down, another thing I noticed is that there were some police at the end of the streets but they took off eventually, like they just left. They didn't, they didn't come and help, so they were making sure everything went smoothly. <clears throat> then, uh, I'm, I'm helping them, I call the ambulance. The ambulance came kind of quickly, guys, like a few minutes, three, four minutes, they were there, you know? Uh, tell them I gotta put pressure, tell them to breathe. And you know, he was bleeding out, the situation looked bad. And then finally, like after I was there for about, you know, like, like five minutes, more or less, the ambulance showed up and uh, the army showed up. The army showed up before the ambulance did. Sorry, the army showed up before the ambulance did. They were having a roll by, they were also getting out. Then the ambulance came like almost simultaneously. Then uh, the, when the ambulance came, they, 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 were, they got him on the, on, on the stretcher thing, the gurney thing, and uh, they couldn't lift him up on the ambulance by themselves because these ambulance guys were little. So I had to help them get in the ambulance. So I helped them, I get him in the ambulance, we're all in the ambulance and then the thing takes off and I'm like, whoa, 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 guys. I don't know this guy, I'm just helping. And then they all looked at me like I was crazy. So then everybody around the place there looked at me like I was nuts for helping because nobody helps with these situations. They could come back and shoot again, you know? So, but I don't care, I always help everybody. I don't care if you're a narco, I don't care what, what you are. If you get hurt, I will help. And I have this reputation in Acapulco that I will help anybody. This is one of the reasons why I never got killed, I think, because I was always at these clubs helping people, always. And I never took money to do anybody any harm, ever. My reputation there is clean. 
Like when I was a head of security of Alebrija, I didn't even take regular bribes for like putting, like for example, somebody gets into a fight and I kick somebody out and then I put a few guards there for him as guards for like a few hours. They want to give me money. I wouldn't even take that. Like I didn't want to have anybody having control over me. So um, that said, I tell them, stop, 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 stop. Let me get out. They look at me like I'm nuts. I get out. I go back upstairs. I have blood all over my clothes. I clean myself up a little bit. I get my bag. I go home and I lived right around the corner. So I told my wife at the time, hey, you know, this and this and that happened. She wanted to go out and look. She was with my daughter there. I told my daughter to stay put. I didn't want her to come out, you know. So I'm like, you know, I'll go all the way to the corner. You go look, you come back. Because the bodies were there still for like an hour, you know. Press got there taking pictures and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it was on the, all, all over the news. And, uh, but I was head of security of this club at the time. And I remember there was these two guys there that day. A tall buff guy and a little guy. They got into a fight at the club like two weeks later. A group of them against a group from Mexico City. And when I got there with all the bouncers and I spoke to them, I was able to get them to leave without further fights. If they had not seen this, if they didn't know me from the gym, it would have been chaotic. The bouncers would have had to jump in and actually fight the, both groups. Uh, but they respected me and they even went around telling everybody, you know, oh, you know, he gave the narcos first aid, you know, that guy, you know, you can really rely on him. He'll help anybody. That's me guys, okay? I'm not the Andrew Tate type. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I've been around, you know? So uh, there's a reason why these YouTubers, they cannot handle it, they cannot handle me. They don't wanna deal with me or talk about me or even react to my stuff. The only one stupid enough is Viking Samurai. But yeah, this is when nobody's at my level. I eat, breathe, sleep and shit, adrenaline, martial arts, fighting, and all this shit, guys. This, 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 this is me. The real deal. And uh, I gotta go. I've been here way too long now. I didn't even mean to talk to tell you guys this fucking story about Mexico. I meant to keep it with Andrew Tate and Goggins. And I forgot about Jordan Peterson. Goddamn. Okay, Jordan Peterson. The reason I don't like Jordan Peterson is 